VirtualBox is a great tool for doing uh, test installs and all kinds of different things. Um, you can easily roll out a whole new computer, just do some testing and then uh, remove it again. And you're always sure that you get a clean environment. Uh, this one is going to be an install of Windows 8.1 RTM in uh, a, a VirtualBox. So the first thing I want to do is create a new VirtualBox and uh, I'll use a lot of these ones. So I normally just use the current date uh, as uh, when I actually set it up. It's very important to decide uh, what version of Windows you're going to put in here because that depends on the drivers that are actually being used inside uh, the virtual computer that it's going to run in. I'm going to do 8.1.64 bit down here, so I'm going to select that one. As uh, it defaults to some memory, and uh, one of the things is that uh, you should never use more than uh, 4 gig less than in the computer you're actually running on. And there's no reason to assign a lot of memory if you're only going to do load testing. So I'm just going to increase it here to uh, 4 megabyte or 4 gigabyte. I have to create a new uh, virtual drive. And again, depending on the operating system, it defaults to a size. There's also many different formats in here, and I'm just going to leave it uh, as uh, the current one. The VHD, for example, is uh, an image that is uh, working also with Hyper-V. I want to allocate it uh, directly, and then I want to go in and uh, specify the size of it again. Uh, I just want to uh, go increase the size up here. Uh, so I just double it, that would give me some room to install applications. And then I create the disk. And now I have created the hardware setup. One thing I want to change before installing is actually uh, the amount of processors. Um, this one is a laptop, uh, but with a Core i7. So it has uh, four physical cores and eight uh, processor or eight uh, virtual ones. So I will select two processors. Again, it's not uh, necessary to give a lot of processors, just enough that the system actually will run. And, uh, giving more than one make the Windows install run uh, a little faster. So, one of the other things is uh, if you have a lot of these ones, it's good to give a description. In here. So this one is the uh, demo install of Windows 8.1. The nice thing is when you look at it, you can actually see it out here. So the first thing after that is to click start. And it goes in and wants to put a disk in the DVD drive. So I'm going to select one in here. And I have um, moved my uh, image out to this one. I have an ISO image. This image is downloaded from MSDN. Uh, ISO files are not publicly available, so you have to download them from uh, the provider. You can make your own ISO uh, from an installation DVD if you have one of those. So I'm going to open that one, and then I'm just going to hit uh, Start down here. It now boots like any normal computer will do, uh, and it goes into um, booting directly from the DVD that I put in here. There's no difference for this computer that runs virtually inside my own, and uh, it works exactly the same way uh, as it would be in it. There's, for VirtualBox, there's several um, pieces of information, and uh, you can read the information, and then it will tell you how to actually use it. When you get used to it, you don't need to do that all the time, so I'll just click OK on that one. And I want to install an English version with US English keyboard, and then I just basically want to hit install now. You need to type in a key for um, Windows 8.1 installation, and I'll type in a key in here, and then I will actually immediately go back to a recording after that. And I'll type in the key. The only thing I will have to do is to accept the license terms. Then I can go in and say, do I want to upgrade? Do I want to custom install? The custom install basically allows you to do uh, whatever you want in here. You can create a new partition, or you can actually just click next in here. If you have um, 
other options you can split the drive on. For a virtual setup, you really don't want to have any specific setup. You just want to click the partition and go click next. And it now starts uh, copying the files. And because I selected two cores, this process of actually getting the files ready runs a little faster. Um, and when all that point is done, it's going to reboot and then I will be able to run uh, all this one uh, in a proper way. In less than two minutes, it's now finished uh, uncompressing the installation files. Uh, it now get ready to uh, do the first reboot and after that one, they will uh, get into the, the operating system and I'll have to set up the first user and uh, password. second reboot for Windows 8.1 installation and uh, it will now ask me for the user credential. Default Windows 8.1 um, want to use your Windows or Microsoft account to log in. I'm actually going to set up a regular user and it requires uh, a few things extra. So first I want to pick my color and I want to look this one. I want to have uh, my name and it's important that you don't reuse the same computer name all the time. So I normally just use the data name. If you use the same name, you get issues with the networking. You can't see the machines from each other and stuff like that. Uh, it uh, comes in and I'll just use the express settings in here. And a lot of things will actually connect and find directly in here of the hardware. But as I get done, I go on to install the devices in here. It has, uh, we want to create an account. I'll instead create a local account and I'll just call it user. Same. And then I will say finish. So Windows 8.1 is uh, now installed. I need to fix the driver so I can get internet connection and other thing in here or, or have network connection clearly because it's showing the news down here. So I need to go install uh, the guest editions. Guest edition is basically the set of drivers that makes the virtual hardware match the actual computer. And it, it don't show up by default, so I have to go in here, go to this PC, on my drive down here, I have my uh, Vbox editions down here. I like to get the extension on the names also, and it has moved a little in 8.1, but if you click on the view options, you can go in and make the setting work uh, the way you actually want for the Windows Explorer. So now I have the extension showing also, and I'll run the Vbox edition. And here it comes up and uh, I want to go through and just install this one. It installed video modes that match what it's supposed to and you can install a graphic card and 
I will say I always want to trust this one because then I can just run the update with any questions in the future or without any questions in the future. But now the driver is ready, so I'm going to reboot this one. For the reboot, uh, everything looks uh, fine and if I want to view full screen now. As I switch to that one, I'll see I get uh, bars around the corner or something like that. But I can go in and uh, customize um, from my desktop in here, so I can actually go in and look at my screen resolutions. But they're currently uh, pretty limited in here. One of the things to get this one working, uh, I would have to um, go uh, shut down my computer in here, so let's go drag the mouse over here. So I can actually go here to my start menu. And uh, it's a little tough figuring out uh, how to shut this down in here, but one of the nice things is if you're actually on the desktop hit Alt F4, you'll get the shutdown option in here. So then it actually uh, shuts down this one. If I start it again, it now goes full screen and um, it will still actually not show the options uh, I have in here for for getting my screen all the way to the edges here, depending on my resolution. With the later versions of Windows, um, one of the things that is required is to add additional um, screen resolutions directly in virtual boxes. So uh, let's go here and uh, shut down Windows 8.1 again. It now found a resolution that kind of met my vertical, but I still have black bars on the side out here. So I really want to get rid of that one also. So uh, the resolutions I have are not matching the 1280 by 800. And there's not one of the ones I can select in here. So let's go correct that one and go out here and shut down the virtual box and I also uh, close this virtual box manager because the one thing I need to do in here is actually uh, use a command uh, where I can go in and uh, add additional settings uh, to my virtual box environment. So I go in here I have to go to program files Go to Oracle, go to Virtual Box. What I'm hitting is tap, by the way, it will automatically fill out here. In this one, there's something called VBox Manage. And the things I want to do, I want to set some extra data. And I need to give the virtual box name, and it's uh, 131010. Then uh, I want to go ahead and uh, put the value in, and it's called uh, custom video mode one. And then I need to put the value in, and that's uh, 1280 x 800 x 3250. So I'm just adding another custom video mode in here to that uh, virtual box. And uh, that command ran. Now I can open up my virtual box uh, console again in here. So I'll now reboot this one. So I added that extra mode in here. And um, when I now reboot, it will be available. But one of the things I will have to do before I do that one, I'll redo my install of my virtual box editions. Let's try to get it in here. So let's go back here, log in. If you don't like getting into the start menu, by the way, here, one of the things is you go to the desktop. Um, and I have a resolution for some reason that is uh, giving me more lines that I can see on the screen. So let's go back down to this one again. I want to keep that setting. If I click down here on properties, under navigation, I can actually select that when I sign in. I'll go to the desktop instead of the start. Uh, 
So everybody else, uh, I want to go to my um, virtual box one down here. And when you run full screen, you have this bar down at the bottom. So I'll just go on the install guest editions. And it's put the DVD in and I'll just run the guest editions here. First time you notice they didn't pop up this one because it didn't have the extra drivers for this um, virtual drive that I was using for the DVDs. So, uh, but back here, I'll just go ahead and click next, install all of it. And this one activate my new um, resolution. And when I'm done restarting here, I'll actually be able to pick uh, 1280 uh, by 800, that is my resolution during this recording. So now I've got my custom resolution in here, and I select that one. I have the screen going from uh, side to side, and my start menu, everything now works in this custom resolution. That's basically how to install Windows 8.1, configure it to use your optimal screen resolution, getting some of the settings like going to desktop directly and things like that. All done in VirtualBox and all done uh, within uh, a few uh, minutes in here. You now have a complete clean environment and you can go and do a test install or you can do anything. And when you're done with it, you have not changed anything on your real computer. You only done it inside the virtual box and you can delete all the files. This computer, by the way, it's a Lenovo W530 with a, a solid state uh, C drive and the virtual box is placed on that one. It has 32 gig of RAM and then Core i7. So it's very powerful, but it's most newer computers will be able to do this one at approximately the same time. Solid state drive is really the key to making this one.